name is Joanne Leewald and I'm a senior lecturer in the School of Medical Science and um, I'm going to talk to you today about how I use Echo 360 and the analytics that are built into Echo 360 to look at the way that students are performing in my course. So the course that I'm going to talk to you about is 2020 MSc Neurobiology. So this is a course that is core for students in the Bachelor of Biomedical Science program and an elective for other students in our school. And the focus of the course is on the structure and function of the brain and the nervous system in health and disease. So how structure underlies function and how damage to particular parts of the brain actually causes the symptoms of the diseases that we see in our patients. And it's taught normally with a combination of lectures and workshops. Obviously in the past it's been in person and this year it has been taught online mode. Uh, but in both uh, iterations of the course, we use a case study based style of teaching where the theory is covered in lectures or the equivalent of lectures. And we put that theory into practice in workshop classes and using case studies. So a couple of years ago, I was asked to be part of the Echo360 Active Learning Platform Early Adopter Program. And I leapt at the opportunity because I could see that some of the new functionality in Echo360 was going to help me achieve my goals when it came to teaching. And one of the things that I had noticed is that I had fewer and fewer students attending the in-person classes. And this was, wasn't because the students didn't like the course, didn't like the teaching, but more that they were just not there right from the beginning. So that for whatever reason, they were choosing not to attend in person and, and were perhaps relying on other resources instead. And so one of the questions I had was, could I use Echo360 and some of the inbuilt tools to engage students and make it um, more interesting for them to come to class and maybe value add to the lecture and workshop class experience? And in doing that, I was hoping that I could perhaps change students' perception of lectures and even improve the lecture capture recordings and hopefully to get the students to contribute more during class. So the workshop classes were always intended to be interactive, but when you have 50% of the cohort sitting in a large lecture classroom, it's not always possible to get them to interact and to put their hand up and to contribute to the class. And I felt that using Echo360 would perhaps encourage them to participate in the class because they wouldn't have to speak up necessarily. They could just answer the polling questions as we went. And then with respect to analytics, we we're looking at how attendance and the, the way that students were using the lecture capture recordings actually determined where, how they performed in the class. And so does essentially the question of whether coming to class even matters. So I use Echo360 tools, in-classroom tools in a couple of different ways. So I use a video extensively in the workshop classes to illustrate key parts of their learning and to help students understand some of the more complex parts of how the brain works. And what I liked about Echo360 was that the videos could be embedded directly. So there was a seamless transition through the slides into the videos and then out the other side, leading to a much more professional experience and less lag time or downtime. I also use the polling questions. So in some instances, we use polling questions that were simply asking the students what they thought the diagnosis for a particular case might be. And this is an example here where you can see that they're just asked on the best diagnosis and other types of multiple choice questions were really more to do with reasoning skills. So this is a follow on from the previous question where students are asked what they, why they chose the previous answer. So what was their reason for their diagnosis for that particular uh, individual? And you can see this is a really good example of how the class was split between two different options. And one thing that the, the interactive tools allow me to do is to talk through the different options and discuss with class with the class why they selected A instead of B, for example. So I also use the other types of questions like the click on target style question. So this is just an example. We cover venoms, toxins and poisons and how they change neuronal signaling. And this was a multiple choice question, but used to click on target option as the answer. So students were asked to uh, to consider the normal action potential or the way that neurons signal and then how the venom or the toxin or the poison that we were talking about might actually change the way that the action potential is generated. The correct answer in this instance is actually C, but you can see the large number of yellow dots representing students who had selected the incorrect answer. So this again allowed me to, um, correct, to quickly 
uh, identify misunderstandings and correct them before we got to an assessment item as an example. And obviously, because this course is about the brain, one of the other things that I really liked about the question is this using images. So for example, this was a question about uh, a stroke patient and they had a particular set of symptoms and the students were asked which part of the brain do they th did they think was damaged in this individual and, and how did that essentially to cause the symptoms that they were seeing. And you can see here that although, that, although there were some obvious differences in opinion with some students, the vast majority of students actually clicked on the correct brain region. So again, making it a nice interactive tool to reinforce the goals of the course, which is how structure underlies the function of the brain. So I actually uh, use the Echo 360 in Classroom tools quite extensively, and this is just a list of the workshop classes for the course. They are lecture captured, obviously, so there's a recording that is the green button on the left, and I also upload my presentation files to the, to the um, presentation icon on the right. And within the presentation files, you can embed the, either the multimedia files or the in-classroom interactives. So you just, inform, just embed a multiple, uh, multiple choice question or click on target type question directly. The students can access these, they can download them, but the interactive slides don't get downloaded. They um, can, however, view the slide deck or the video or both simultaneously. So there's a lot of functionality there for the students as well. So this uh, little video is really about the analytics. So I just wanted to show you how we use analytics in this course. So this is um, for my course. And when you navigate to the analytics tab, which is the top right hand side, there are a couple of different views that you can get. And this first one is looking at classes. So this is each individual class in the list. You can see the list down the bottom here. And each of these um, bars on the graph represent different classes. And this is one, if you click on this, if this was live, you could click on all the different ones and you can see the breakdown of some of the analytics just by looking at the graph. So this is, this is our week two workshop class. And you can see the number of slide deck views the number of, of polling responses and video views and, and those types of analytics. You can also download those analytics. You can see some of them down the bottom, but if you export the full data set, then you get a lot more um, detail and a lot more data for each of the classes. And that's what it looks like when you download the analytics by class. So the classes are down the left-hand side here, and then you've got some of the, the metrics, which I'll talk about in a moment uh, in, this, in an Excel spreadsheet, essentially. The, you also can look at various analytics by student view. So I've just uh, whited, you know, blocked out the names of the students that would normally appear in, in this column here. And you can have a look at some of the analytics that are available for each student. When you click on the export full data set uh, button at the top here, you actually get a lot more detail and it breaks it down both uh, by student and by class. So uh, I'll show you what that looks like. Again, I've just squashed up some of the columns here so that you can't see the, the detail about the students' names. But you can see that you get a list of classes and then you get a breakdown of all of the analytics for each of those classes for each individual student. So this is a, the spreadsheet's a little clumsy, uh, but certainly all the data is there and it's just a matter of manipulating the data and having a look at it. So there are a number of different metrics, as you can see across the top, and I think it's really important that you know exactly what metrics mean what as uh, before you do any kind of analysis. So some of them are more useful than others, and I'll talk a little bit about what I used and how I used it um, as, as I show you, as I walk you through the examples. So here are some of the uh, metrics. This is not all of them. So the first couple, the first two, attendance and engagement are kind of um, misleading, I would say. So attendance in this instance actually means a count of the students who enter the classroom. And depending on how you set up your classes or your classroom, they this may not be a count of the students who joined the live class. So whether that's in person or in, um, in an online situation, whether they actually are in your your online class say you collaborate there it's a count of the number of students who join the echo 360 classroom during the class time and of course that's not necessarily going to be truly reflected with the number of students who attended your class so use with caution uh, engagement is another metric it's essentially a, um, a calculation that's uh, an arbitrary somewhat arbitrary calculation that um, is termed engagement and in the words of the echo 360 website 
This is a score of the cumulative total of countable data points, which is a fancy way of saying not very much at all. So essentially what it is, is it counts the number of clicks on various parts of the courses, uh, slide deck, uh, video views, and a whole bunch of other things. And you can actually adjust the weighting and get a weighted engagement score. The biggest problem with engagement is it's also based on the way that they calculate attendance. So I haven't, haven't used either of these metrics in my analysis because, because of that, because I think it's, it's slightly misleading. That's not to say that you couldn't come up with an engagement score that is weighted for your particular course. But again, it's something that, that you need to actually be mindful of, exactly what you're actually measuring when you look at this metric. So what I did use was video views, because I'm particularly interested in whether students come to class and then whether, regardless of whether they come to class or not, whether they are using the lecture capture recordings and how they're using those recordings. So I was interested in video views so the number of times the students view a video, the metric that comes directly from Echo360 Analytics is simply the number of clicks. And that is a little bit different to the number of actual views. So the number of clicks means that you can get a, a, a one click, means the student has clicked on it and they may not have watched any more than 1% of the total video and it still counts as a view. And if that's what you're interested in, obviously you can do the metric on that raw information, those raw data points, but if you're interested in how many students actually view the entire video, which is what I was interested in, then that you, it involves a little bit more manipulation. Then the one underneath that is video view percentage, obviously that's the amount of the, each video the student has watched, 100% of the video obviously means that they've watched the whole thing, and then um, it comes as, it goes all the way down to 0%, obviously. And because I upload my presentation files directly to Echo 360, I can use the, the metrics which are associated with views of the slide deck or the presentation file. And there's a number of different ones. This is just one of them. Um, and that, uh, you can have a look at the number of slides, the number of sl interactive slides the students have looked at the, and um, how students, how many times the students have looked at the, the presentation. And then because of the embedded interactive questions, you can look at polling responses and a number of other metrics that are associated with the polling question. So that includes participation, so how many students have actually answered or attempted to answer questions, and you can also look at the number of correct and incorrect responses. So I haven't uh, delved deeply into either slide deck views or polling responses at the moment, and my particular interest is in video views or how students are using lecture capture. So I've collected a couple of different bits of data and um, because of the way in which Echo360 calculates attendance, I actually did my own uh, data collection for attendance. So in 2018 and 2019, which is the data that I'm showing you today, attendance was um, the number of students in the classroom in the in-person offering of the course. And that was calculated using a, a role which was circulated through the class. So the classes were two hours long and the role was circulated for that whole time. Students were told why we were taking attendance right at the beginning and by and large most students were quite um, keen to tick their name off or to sign into the class. This data was used to calculate both the class attendance, so the percentage of enrolled students who are actually physically present in the room, but also the attendance behaviour of each individual student. So it doesn't, didn't matter to me whether students came to class or not uh, so much, but I wanted to know the number of classes or the percentage of classes that were attended by each individual student. Obviously then there are a number of analytics that were available through the Echo360, so directly from the course site. And in this instance, and the data that I'm going to show you, is particularly the number of video views by student and the percentage of videos that were viewed. And I also have an, a, a, an active learning survey, which is a paper in 2018, it was a paper-based survey, 2019 it was an online survey. Uh, this year, again, um, it was an online survey, obviously. And this just really asked the students their opinions about face-to-face -face classes and some of the factors affecting the choice to attend or not. So remember that this, the data that I'm showing you is from 2018 and 2019, before the COVID affected 2020 offering. So some of that may or may not be relevant uh, at the moment, but it's certainly interesting to see the pre-COVID conception of online learning. And um, as I said, I've collected this data for 2020 as well. So I'm hoping to analyse that next. 
So there are two years worth of data collection, 2018 and 2019. It was limited to 14 classes in each year. So these were workshop classes that included case studies, interactive questions and or multimedia. So some included all three, all of them included case studies, some didn't have multimedia. So at, we collected attendance for every student and collated that with student results. Students who had withdrawn from the course or who didn't see all items of assessment were excluded. So that we ended up with a total of 208 students. The ECHO 360 analytics were available for 205 of those students. And, and this brings me to an important point is that one of the limitations with the way that data is collected through the ECHO 360 site is that it's not dynamic. So as students drop the course or pick up the course in the first few weeks of the trimester, they don't seem to be captured in um, the ECHO 360 analytics. So for example, if a student either has enrolled early but dropped out, they stay in the list of students, uh, although they're, they're no longer enrolled. And if students enroll late, they we seem to miss them. So there was a small number of, of students over the two years that just didn't appear in the ECHO 360 list of students. And uh, that was just three students. So it's not, a, it's not a big problem, but it is worth noting. And I had active learning surveys for 105 students, but I'll come back to that. So just looking at attendance, so this is really just to set the scene, if you like. So um, this is not the ECHO 360 analytics, but the class role that was circulated. And it's really just to look at the attendance over the 12 weeks of the trimester. And you can see that attendance fluctuates a lot. It hovers around, averages around about 45% of the cohort are physically present in the class across the 12 weeks. Some weeks it's substantially more, some weeks it's substantially less. But on average, it's sort of around about 45% of the cohort, which um, in some instances may uh, be considered to be quite high. The other thing that's really obvious is, is how consistent it is between the two years. So despite the fact that it fluctuates over 12 weeks, the pattern is, is really similar across the two years, uh, which is interesting. So I use this data to look at or to group the students based on their attendance behaviour. So they were just in three groups, attenders, or non-attenders, I should say, students who attended less than half of the classes in person and students who attended at least half of the classes in person. So this is actually greater than or equal to 50%. And this is just a category that we used for further analysis. Uh, the case study, uh, so video views obviously are really interesting in that case studies um, tend to be viewed quite a lot. It's a, it's a different type of learning style for a lot of students and I noticed that uh, students were going back and re-watching some of their workshop classes. And when you go in and look at the analytics of the individual videos, which is one of the options, you can, there's an overlay of how much of the video has been watched or the average. So you can see here that the vast majority of the video has been watched and it's really just the, the end that tails off. But this is really important. So I think there's a difference between students who simply click on a video and maybe by accident and only watch one or two percent of it to students who are using lecture capture to review key uh, concepts so on the up or leading up to a, an assessment item for example and students who are who are essentially using lecture capture to replace the lecture so they don't attend lectures face to face or in person but they are quite diligent in watching the entire lecture capture so using it as a replacement that's really what I was interested in is how students are using lecture capture, how it relates to attendance and then how it relates to their performance. So this is really important. I think it's, it's, it's important to actually go back and have a look at your videos and to make sure that you know how much of the video is being watched and um, that it's, it's the majority of the video if you're using it in this way. So this is an example of the type of data that you can export. So this is the 2019 data. I've, again, I've blanked out the student names down the side. So for each individual student, you can get the number of views, how, how long they viewed, the, the lecture capture duration. So in this instance, it was 106 minutes of, of, the, of the lecture capture. And then the percentage, which was the uh, percentage of the video viewed. So what I did was actually rather than just count students who had viewed videos because these are simply clicks, I actually coded students for each class that I was looking at, for all 14 classes, I coded them based on their lecture capture usage profile. So a zero is a student who watched less than 10% of the video. So 
ex, uh, excluding students who perhaps clicked on it by accident or really haven't watched it at all. Students who were watching between 10 and 80% of the length of the video. So in, in my mind, these are students who are perhaps using lecture capture as a review tool. So um, just to review key concepts or to, to double check things that they may feel that they have missed from the lecture or from the workshop class. And then those students who are watching the entire video. So I use 80% as a cutoff. And that's simply because this was the automated uh, lecture capture system. So in some instances, the lecture capture ran for two hours, but I may have finished a few minutes early. So by setting it at 80%, it means that they've essentially watched the entire video and maybe not. If, if they've left before and ended, it was, it was just a small amount at the end that they didn't, that they didn't watch. So when I coded these students, I looked at um, the, this data in two different ways. So I'm looking at the total number of views per week. So remember that this is what um, the, the percentage of students or the class percentage who watch the entire video each week. So the percentage of the cohort who's doing that. So partial views were excluded. And um, we just looked at the, the um, average across the weeks. And you can see it's a little bit of difference between the two cohorts, but there is a fair percentage of the class who is watching the entire workshop video each week. And then I looked at lecture capture usage behavior, if you like. So total, this is the total views by students. So the, again, the students were classified or grouped together based on the way that they were using their lecture capture. So the students in the lowest group didn't use lecture capture at all. And I had students who watched fewer than 50% of the recordings across the trimester and those who watched at least 50% of the recordings across the trimester. So again, this is just a grouping based on lecture capture behaviour. What was really interesting was when we combined the attendance behaviour and the lecture capture usage profile, then we came up with some really interesting results. So this is now looking at um, students are divided based on lecture capture usage across the bottom here. So they, students who never used it, those who use less than use it less than 50% of the time and those that use it more than 50% of the time. And the attendance profile is the line graph. So non-attenders, students who attend less than 50% of the time and students who attend at least 50% of the time and looking at their final grade. And what was really interesting is that the students in this group, so students who came to class more than 50% of the time actually some of, some of them never used lecture capture at all. Some of them used it obviously for some topics and not others, so less than 50% of the time. But there was a fair percentage, about 20% of the class, who both came to the in-person classes but also watched the entire lecture capture recording, which I thought was really interesting, but quite a large number. The number of students who were actually using lecture capture and actually watching the entire lecture capture was also quite kind of surprising. And that included students who, who never came to class or rarely came to class. And essentially, the, the take home message is that lecture capture usage had absolutely no impact on, on the grades for students who came to class, like students who didn't use it versus students who did use it was, was very much a straight line across here. And those students were obviously uh, achieving at a very high rate. And students who rarely, if ever, came to class, so these groups down the bottom here, uh, which was about 37% of the cohort, could perform as well as those who, who did come to class, but only really if they watched the, the entire lecture capture recording. So I haven't shown it here, but if you look at students who only watch bits and pieces of the lecture capture, then they don't, they don't reclaim their grades in any way close to the same um, extent. So what was really interesting to me, and in talking to some of the students about this, I realized that what I'd done by, by introducing and using in-classroom tools during the lecture and workshop classes, that I actually value added to the lecture capture experience as well. And I, I'm not adverse to that. And certainly in, in our current climate in 2020, where we're in a situation of, of teaching online or blended or hybrid, and certainly moving forward, we'll be looking at new ways to do that, that you can actually create a, a a valuable lecture capture experience by using the Echo360 in-classroom tools. And I think that's really important. So um, just before I sign off, I just wanted to share with you some of the student opinions about lecture capture and usage. And bear in mind that these, this was captured 
this data was, was captured in 2018 and 2019, and I, I really strongly believe that student opinions have changed in, in 2020, and um, I've collected that data again this year, so that'll be interesting to look at as well. So, uh, and we, I asked them uh, a range of different questions, but I was particularly interested in their thoughts about the workshop classes and whether they were beneficial, so that, that uh, applying their knowledge in a workshop format. Um, I asked them, and you can see that the vast majority of students either agreed or strongly agreed, uh, I asked them about the use of in-classroom interactive tools and how that helped them. And again, the vast majority of students agreed or strongly agreed. And I also asked them uh, whether they felt attending class actually helped them to, rather than just reading through. Like, did they get any value out of coming to class? And you can see, again, the overwhelming majority of students agreed with that as well. On the flip side, I asked them, and again, this is pre-COVID affected 2020. So I asked them, um, since lectures and workshop classes were lecture captured, if they felt any real need to come to class, and they strongly disagreed with that statement that there, what, there was no need to come to class. And I also asked them if they felt that face-to-face uh, -face lectures and workshop classes were outdated in the modern era, and that um, the 2018 and 2019 cohort were very adamant that they did not agree with that and they didn't think that face-to-face -face classes were outdated at all. So what does this mean moving forward? And for those of you who are looking at new ways to to teach in 2020 and 2021 and, and beyond. Um, what I did differently this year was that uh, the lectures were pre-recorded and available um, online, obviously, and they students watch them asynchronously, so whenever they, they felt that they needed it to. But the theory for the class was actually available in, in three different ways. The pre-recorded lectures, obviously, for those students who like that format, I also um, created interactive lessons that were hosted in Microsoft Sway that had embedded video and other interactivity, uh, including uh, quizzes and, and those sorts of things. So for students who like that more upbeat, more interactive uh, format. And because we didn't really know what the circumstances would be like uh, in terms of whether we would be able to go to campus or not, or whether we may even have been in lockdown, I also um, provided the content of the sways and the pre-recorded lectures with no interactivity as an e-book that they could, you know, if they needed to, they could go out and print a copy of um, in case, you know, they didn't have great internet connectivity or, or perhaps we were in lockdown. And this was all done well in advance of T2 actually starting. So this year, again, I, I delivered workshop classes, but they were delivered live and online via Collaborate. And we still used Echo 360 and we still used all of the interactivity. So students joined the live class and then had a separate screen where they could answer questions in Echo 360 and follow along. It worked really well and with the added advantage of having the chat function in Collaborate. So we had um, questions being asked in the chat as well as the students answering questions in Echo 360. So in order to be able to do the analytics again this year, I downloaded the recordings from Collaborate and uploaded them into Echo 360, and they were only available through Echo 360 so that, again, I could capture all of the same data in terms of the number of views and um, the percentage of the video that was viewed and those sorts of things. And attendance, obviously, we had no face-to-face -face classes this year, but I uh, attendance is available via Collaborate session, so you can download a report that tells you who was logged on and who wasn't for each individual session, um, which again is quite useful. So there was no class role as such, but I, I still have an attendance metrics. And the other thing that I did was a little bit different to previous years is that I downloaded the Echo360 analytics both for the classes and the students every week. And I did that every Monday morning. So we have now uh, 14 data points or uh, 15 data points because I included uh, O-Week uh, before the uh, class started, as well as the Monday after, uh, Monday of week 13 or in swap back, and the day of, uh, or the day after the end of trimester exam, just for comparison. And that's really because the question re now is, how are students using those resources? Are they are they keeping up to date and, and, and doing them, uh, reviewing the content weekly or are they using a just-in-time kind of the, you know, the day before the assessment item and madly trying to, to review the content. So that's just a summary of how I use Echo360 and how I've used the Echo360 analytics and uh, thank you for your attention.